Hey guys, I wanted to make a video about how I use the website glazy.org to catalog my glaze recipes and also to look at the chemistry of my glazes. So if you are unfamiliar with glazy.org, um, it is a website where anyone can create an account and you can enter your glaze recipes and then it will translate your recipe into the unity molecular formula. And this is what breaks down a glaze recipe into its various um, elements like silica, alumina, boron, uh, the fluxes like sodium, calcium, magnesium, that sort of thing. So I find it really useful because um, you can set your recipes to public and share them with the rest of the ceramics community or you can keep them private if you're just testing something um, if you're not ready to share something then you can have a private collection of glaze recipes as well so I have a bit of both um, so this here is my account um, so in my account, um, I'll be able to see all the recipes that I've uploaded, um, including the ones that are private. So, um, all these recipes up here are public for everyone to see. And then if you look at this here, this little eyeball with a line through it, that means it's private. So it's just a recipe that I, um, input it into Glazy, but it's not something that um, I necessarily want to share with the community. Um, just sometimes I'm just playing around with formulas and I haven't actually tested a glaze recipe yet. Um, so I don't want to confuse people by uploading a lot of hypothetical recipes uh, without photos and that sort of thing. Um, so over on the left here, what's really handy is you can click this little checkbox that says has photo um, and then you can only see the recipes where a photo has been uploaded um, so i've uploaded all the recipes from cedar hill studio which is where i work as a technician um, so you're welcome to go to glazy.org slash you slash Sue McLeod Ceramics and you will find all of these recipes available. Um, and you're welcome to use them, test them, change them, whatever you like. Uh, so if you don't have an account, um, up here, if I go here and I click log out, um, so this is what it looks like if you're just getting to the website and um, so you can either hit the login button and log yourself in or if you don't have an account yet you can hit this join button and then you just need to put your name your email address and a password um, and that will create an account for you uh, and then you can start adding recipes you can also use Glazy just to search for recipes um, and they have a really good search function. So you can search, you can just type in, um, if you want a pink glaze, you can type in the word pink into the search and then any glazes that have been uploaded publicly with the word pink somewhere in the title or description are going to show up here. And then you can also see it shows which cone these glazes are these glazes are for. So like this is cone five to seven oxidation, cone six to eight oxidation, cone ten. Um, so that's something that you can put into your glaze recipe as well, which cone temperature you're firing to. And then you can upload photographs and. Um, and then other people can also, if they test your recipes, they can upload photographs too. So we'll just click on this. This is one of my glazes. Um, oh, this isn't one. Let's go back. Um, so if I type in clear, 
um, all the clear glazes that have been uploaded will show up here. So here's my clear glaze that I've uploaded. So I can click on that. And then as you can see, um, so I uploaded this photo here, but then this was uploaded by Derek Ow, who is the creator of the glazy.org platform. Um, so he took my glaze recipe and he tested it. Um, and then he uploaded his results as well. So Glazy is very much a collaborative platform where people can share information and test things and um, share different results on different clay bodies, different firings, different kilns, and that sort of thing. So once you have an account, then you can just click this login button um, and my information is stored in Google Chrome. So I just hit login and then now I am logged in and now um, I could upload a recipe if I wanted to. So if you click this little plus button, you can click add a recipe and then you just give your recipe a name. So test glaze. And then you can just start adding materials. So I can just sort of make a glaze from scratch here. Uh, just guessing at materials. So when you start, uh, when you start typing, then the, it sort of auto fills in what it thinks you're looking for. So whiting, let's go 20% whiting. Uh, Gersley borate, maybe 15%. Um, and then, so as I'm adding materials, you can see this is the unity molecular formula up here. So it takes nephsi, for example, uh, contains sodium, potassium, um, silica, and alumina. And so it takes each ingredient, breaks it down into um, how many moles or molecules of each of these oxides. And, uh, and then the unity molecular formula puts the glass formula, sorry, the glass formers into proportion with the fluxes. So as you add another material, it'll just update it each time. So maybe some EPK, 15%. So you can see that these numbers are changing here. Um, so we've got four glaze ingredients. Um, and here the total is 100%. So say I wanted to add another ingredient, silica, um, 15. So here we have a good cone six glaze recipe. Um, I have not tested this. I just kind of created it on the fly. Um, but if you look down here, now you can see the, the recipe does not add up to 100%. So I've added more than 100% uh, worth of materials. So if I wanna make the recipe add up to 100, I can just click this button and then it puts, um, it renormalizes the formula so that everything adds up to a hundred. Um, or 99.99, that's probably just from some rounding up and down. So I could change this. Um, so now we're at a hundred percent. So that is how you add a recipe. Um, and then I can hit save. And that just saves it into my catalog. And the default is to save it as a private recipe. Um, so nobody can see it until you hit publish. So because this isn't a glaze that I've tested or I don't have a picture for it, then I'm probably not going to publish it for everyone. But so you can um, if you click this edit button here, 
Uh, then you can add more information about your glaze recipe. So the name, I just called it test glaze. Um, I could type a description here. So if you have any notes from your firing, um, if you know what the ideal specific gravity would be, you can write that in here. Um, you can write which clay bodies you've tested it on, that sort of thing. Um, the default is a glaze, but you can also enter clay body slip under glaze recipes. So you'll want to change that uh, the type of the recipe here, if that's the case. Uh, you can say whether it's opaque or transparent, translucent. That's just good information. Any information you can add will help other people decide whether it's a good recipe for them to try. Surface, is it matte, semi-matte, satin, glossy? So you can add that information there. And then which cone temperature so um, I just generally write cone six unless I have tested it at other temperatures um, and I generally fire to cone six. Uh, so I just write cone six in the lowest cone. I leave the highest cone blank. But if you know, say you fired uh, to cone seven one time, you know that it's uh, still good at cone seven, then you could write that in there. Atmosphere oxidation. If you're using electric kilns, that would be an oxidation atmosphere. Um, if you're using a gas kiln, you might be firing in reduction. Salt and soda, wood, raku, all of those things you can add in here. And then down here, we've got testing, production, or discontinued. So until I have tested this and started using it on actual pots rather than test tiles, I would leave it in the testing status. Um, but if it's a glaze that is used regularly, then I would um, update it to production. And you can write what country you're in. And then um, I have all of these bookmarks, these collections. Um, so you can put it into a bookmark so when I do a workshop, for example, I will take all of the recipes that were used in the workshop and then I will just create a collection. So the last workshop I did was in Whitehorse, Yukon, and so all the, all the recipes I used for that workshop, I just made a Whitehorse workshop collection and then it's easy to find just that selection of recipes. Um, so I'm not going to bookmark this recipe. We'll leave it in testing. And um, I'm not sure. Okay. And then this, um, this field here at the top, you can translate to all of these different languages. So if English isn't your first language, um, you can choose any of these languages and then it will translate your all your recipe recipes and materials into one of these languages um, if the language that you speak isn't on this list uh, and you can get in touch with Derek Ow at uh, Glazy Support Facebook group and um, uh, he's always looking for people to help him translate into other languages so this has been a collaborative effort from the ceramics community around the world. So, um, so once I've edited all of those details, I can hit save. And then if I click, um, just over here, this is the title of the recipe. This is also a hyperlink, so I can click that and then it pulls up my recipe. So here's the recipe here normalized to a hundred. Here's my unity molecular formula. Um, the extended UMF, that is if you're using colorants, um, you can either choose to view the, the UMF with the colorants included in the chemistry or not included in the chemistry. So whichever whichever way you want to look at it, that's available to you um, because colorants are 
also fluxes or refractory and so they fall under these different categories as well. Um, but that can get a little complex if that's not something that you're familiar with. So you can always just um, just keep this regular UMF and just look at that. And then it breaks down your recipe, um, each material into the percentages of each of the oxides. So if you're curious, um, you know, nephsi, we've got 43.5% of nephsi in this glaze recipe. And then uh, it breaks it down into um, the percentages of silica, alumina, sodium, potassium, uh, some trace calcium, magnesium, iron, that sort of thing. And then if you keep scrolling down, here we have the stall chart. Um, so that this is where your recipe gets plotted on um, with the silica on the x-axis and the alumina on the y-axis. So you can see where your recipe falls on this stall chart. Um, if you're unfamiliar with stall, then um, that is something for another video. Um, and then you can also show images. So if I click allow zoom here, it's going to allow, allow me to zoom in on this section of the stall chart. Um, I can drag it around and then it shows the images that have been uploaded for each of the recipes that fall on this map. And these are the 100 closest recipes by the chemistry to the recipe that I have just created. And so you can zoom in, zoom out. I'm just scrolling my mouse here. If you are on a mobile device, you can uh, pinch your fingers to zoom. And then I can click this checkbox, only show my items. Um, so these are only the glazes that I have uploaded into Glazy and it plots them all on the map. And then if you scroll down, um, if there's similar base recipes that have already been uploaded into Glazy, then you'll see those here. Um, so that's handy because if someone has already tested a recipe that you are testing, then you can see what their results look like. Um, and then similar analyses. Uh, so here's one of my glazes that has um, a similar similar chemistry to the one that I just created. So this section would just be like similar ingredients and percentages. And then this is like where it breaks it down into the UMF if the UMF is similar as well. And then people that test your recipe can review it and rate it up to five stars. So if it's a really good stable recipe that doesn't ever give you any troubles, then you could give it a five star rating and you can write a little description about the glaze here. And you can do that for other people's recipes that you have tried as well. And then you can also type comments. So if you're on someone else's recipe and you have a question about it, you can type that here and then they'll get a notification um, and then they can respond to your question. And then at the very top here, this is where you would upload a photograph. So because I haven't tested this recipe yet, um, I haven't taken a photo of it, but um, all glazes that I test, I do take photos of. So you can just upload a, an image file and then you can give it a caption. I usually write which clay body the image is using. So, um, yeah, so if I tested this glaze um, and I post the image on Plainsman M340, for example, then I would put that in the caption. So just so people know which clay body um, I'm using in that particular image. So sometimes I'll test glazes on multiple different clay bodies. And so I would upload a different image for each one. And then I would type in which clay body was being used because different glazes look different um, on different clay bodies. Sometimes 
a glazable craze on one clay body and not another. So um, it's very handy to just have that information uh, so other people know which clay body that you are using. Um, and then you can also write the temperature uh, that this particular image was fired to, the, whatever the piece is in the image, you can just specify which temperature that was fired to. And then you can also specify the atmosphere. So whether it was fired in oxidation, reduction, that sort of thing. And then also when you're ready to publish a recipe, um, this is just where you, you just hit this publish button and that will make it visible to the rest of the public. So once you have tested a glaze, um, ideally, and uploaded a photograph, then you can always publish it and then you can share it with the rest of the ceramics community. So that is the basics of how to use glazy.org. Um, I encourage you to make an account and just start browsing recipes, just looking at how they are set up. If you click this little uh, glazy logo in the corner, it'll bring you to the, the home screen. And these are all recipes that are sorted by upload date. So um, the most recently uploaded recipe is here. And so you can scroll through, see what people are uploading, and then you can also um, do some searching. And then you can also see, here's the stall chart that I was talking about before. Um, oh, and this button here just extends this left-hand sidebar so that it's a larger screen for you to see. And so this plots all the recipes that are visible on the screen. It plots them on stall here. Okay, so that is it for my introduction to glazy.org. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and um, if there are other videos of different um, tasks or processes that you would like to see me make, um, just leave that in the comments as well. Okay, thank you.